Hi, my name is Melissa Morales. I am originally from Camden, New Jersey and grew up in Runnymede, New Jersey. Oh my goodness. Growing up in Camden, I grew up in the section of Pollock. I barely was allowed outside because I had a very strict mother, a very old Hispanic mother. And I also had a very active on-duty police officer father. Um, I grew up in a separate, two separate households. Growing up with my mom um, as a single mom, as a very hardworking mother, our time was very limited. I would see her in the morning as she was getting us dressed and getting us ready to go to the babysitters or to school. And I would see her at night, usually around seven o'clock to eat dinner and put us to bed. Now with my dad, I seen him in a totally different light. Um, I just see, I saw freedom. I saw, you know, he could be outside the house, I wouldn't be outside the house. And that was also a beautiful thing. But we were never close. There was never any true daughter and father bond. <laughs> so I wanted to be Andy Martinez. <laughs> And for those who do not know, Angie Martinez is a radio personality in, on Hot 97 back then. She's now on Power 105. Um, but I just always wanted to use my voice. When I was in high school, a teacher of mine, Michael Chambers, who is now the dean of Paul VI, so he said, this is what I'm going to do. You're going to join my public speaking class. You're going to talk to a room of seniors. I spoke so good that he said, I don't know what you're gonna do outside of here, but you need to go into communications. And from that moment, he has really helped and molded me when I was in high school to use my voice. <laughs> so my son's father and I, we met at a pool party. And as soon as I walked into the pool party, that is the man that I saw. <laughs> And it sounds so cliche to say, but it was literally like a, it wasn't an instant connection, but it was like, I see you, you see me, instant connection. So me and my son's father, we only dated for a few weeks. We met in July of 2019. We had a whole lot of fun. And there's a, there's a saying, it only takes one time, that one time got me pregnant with my child. <laughs> I had my son in the height of the pandemic, April, 2020. So I was high risk at 19 weeks, but when we went to the doctors to do his anatomy scan, everything was looking great, looking good. We had just found out I was having a boy, so I was really, really excited to be a boy mom. But the nurse stopped as she was doing an anatomy scan and she said, are you having any pain? And I said, no. But again, I don't know what pain I should be feeling or not feeling because this is my first pregnancy. And she said that you're gonna have to go talk to the doctor because it looks like your cervix is opening it up. Um, we went and we sat down and the doctor immediately told me that I needed to go to the ER. You have to go get your cervix stitch because your son is on the verge of coming out. It, it only takes up to 10 centimeters for the baby to come out. You're almost at three. So I said, okay, got my cervix stitch. And through that week that I was in the hospital of November, 2019, there was a whirlwind of why is my son's fight so hard right now? So um, now as I'm on bed rest with a new challenge, something I've never heard about, something I've never experienced, nothing has never been around me. It was really hard to take in for me personally. For my son's father, he became very shut down. He shut off his emotions towards me. And that was a journey within itself because I'm still holding on to, I got you, I got us, and I got y'all. 
so I have a feeling of loneliness because I just, I, there, there couldn't be no connection. The doctors were very vocal and adamant that you can't get your feet rubbed, you can't get your hand rubbed, you can't get your head rubbed because you can't have any stimulation. So <laughs> my son is born, we go home, we're, we're in the pandemic, we're all in. My son's father has to get back to work. He couldn't enjoy. Nobody talks about the woman emerging after she has her child. She cannot go back to her old ways. I knew for sure I cannot go back to my, who I was, the life and the lifestyle that I had. Um, I knew I had to change things up. So it was important for me for the connection because do you see me now? Do you value me now? And unfortunately, I just didn't feel like that was the case. So I felt as if I had postpartum within the first early weeks, I say within the first 12 weeks, because everything was an irritation to me. And I couldn't figure out why, because in our community, Hispanics and African-Americans, we don't talk about postpartum depression. It's, well, you should be happy, you have a baby, and it's not about you anymore. You gotta get over it, you gotta be strong. But I already knew I didn't wanna be strong anymore. I didn't want to have the strength of a, just of, as a person, not as a mother, but I didn't wanna have the strength of a, a strength of a person because I was never given the time to fully have the strength. I had to be strong for my son the whole journey through. So now that he's here, I don't wanna show up strong. I want someone else to do it with me. Um, to show me that you still got me, not us. I know we're taken care of, but what about me? It just got to the point where it's like, this person just does not want me. He wants the family, he wants the child, but he doesn't want me, the person, Melissa. I've, I felt like a sadness for myself. Um, not from the standpoint of wanting to be loved, but from the standpoint of how come I'm not getting chosen? When two people choose and intentionally decide they're going to have a child and be a family, it's way different from someone choosing you. So I still wasn't working. So the feeling of, I can't provide for me or my son without this man, because at this point I didn't work for almost a year. And yes, I could have went back to work, but I was so scared. I have this baby who I struggled to bring here. We're in a pandemic. How can I even say I want to go back to work? I chose not to go back to work after a certain time. Knowing that if he left or if I left tomorrow, I would have to go back to work, but I still try to work it out because I said, you know what, we need you. Because I, truth be told, I didn't want to do it alone. I did not want to do any part of parenthood by myself. Um, I believe that as a woman, as a man, we do have our roles. And I knew for me, I didn't want to be the strong one and say, well, I'm going to go work. <laughs> and put my child in daycare. Um, I just didn't want to. So throughout this whole process, it was a lot of, it was a battlefield within myself. It was a lot that I, had, I was fighting within myself. How do I show up, not only for my family, but for me? <sighs> yes, yeah, so I did feel trapped. 
but not within anything I was going through. It was really entrapment within myself, mentally, emotionally. And how do I break free? How do I get out of these feelings? Because I've never felt this way before. I've never cried as much as I've cried throughout postpartum and being pregnant. There was a woman on the television and she just said, I'm done with being broken, broken. It's Lisa Nichols. And I just looked at her and I just said, wow, I feel you. I feel you. And I looked at my son and I told him, I got you, I got us, and we are going to win. And from that moment, I've been intentional about winning. So I internally had to take on, okay, now I have to switch. I have to switch my roles. The strength that I didn't want to use, I'm going to have to use. And I'm going to have to figure it out. And I have to figure it out quick. I told my son that day, it was back in October of November of 2020. I said, when you turn one, I will be in my winning season. Every single day for the rest of my life, I will pour into me in these four areas so you get the overflow. So I started reading more books, listening to more podcasts, working out more, like really being deliberate and intentional because at this point I can't fold and I can't fail. And right after my son turned one, I became an entrepreneur. And I rebranded from a radio host, I rebranded into a speaker. And I said, if I feel this way, how many other people just want to win? They just want to win in their daily life, within themselves. And I started doing proposals and getting speaking engagements. And within that, I created a clothing brand, an empowerment brand called Winning Season. And I started selling shirts and hoodies just to get the message out more, that people deserve to win and win for the rest of their days. And then within that, I created a journal. <laughs> I created a journal that is so personal to one's experience, where you are intentional about what you put in your journal. Um, because when I was pregnant and throughout my journey, I had seven journals I had written in and they were all just notebooks. I couldn't find a journal that was like specifically for how I felt. So I created it. I learned how to do it and I created it. The message I would give to anyone that sees this, the winning season is yours. It's what you want it to be. It's what you created to be and what you feel it to be. It's not, it's not about anyone else. It's about you versus you. It's, even hearing it right now, it's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I felt those things. And, but it's okay to feel those things. And I think where people start to get caught up in, in other people is like finding their validation in other people, it's because they're saying like, okay, you're still not choosing me and I gotta figure out why. Where for me, it was you're not choosing me and I gotta say it's okay. I have to, it's okay that you're not choosing me. I, I have to choose me. I didn't want to figure out why no more. <laughs> okay, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> it is okay. <laughs>